Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys. Welcome back to our slash entitled people, where people think they can do or have whatever they want because they're better than everyone. And in today's episode, guys, a spoiled brat robs a store and then has the nerve to get mad and call cops when employees chase her down. My goodness. Guys, I hope you enjoy the stories today. Don't shake your heads too hard. And hey, subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss these wild, wild stories. So this happened last summer when I was working at a weed dispensary. Here's some background. State law requires that someone that enters the store has their ID checked before we can discuss any product with them. ID needs to be checked every time they enter the store. There are many, many signs up indicating that your ID needs to be checked or you are not permitted to be in the store. So the store I worked at was known for being a high-end store, which more or less meant that we had few products under $10. It was a slow summer afternoon, and we were hanging in the store when a taxi rolls up in front of the store. A woman with rolling luggage, dressed like she'd been at a techno rave, complete with white faux fur leg warmers, got out, and she wheeled her luggage into the store. My coworker greets her and checked her ID. And Karen says, I was here yesterday with my friend, and we got a two-pack for $5, so I want that. At that, my coworker says, I'm sorry, we don't have any two packs at that price. We have this other product that's in that price range if you'd like. Well, the closest two pack we had was $5.50. And Karen threw such a fit over not wanting to pay the extra 50 cents that my coworker eventually asked her to leave. And she puts up a fight. She really didn't want to pay the extra 50 cents. After some arguing with us, she left. Now, the front of the store was floor-to-ceiling glass windows overlooking the parking lot, so we saw her grumpily sit on her luggage for the next 10 or so minutes. And then she comes back inside, leaving her luggage outside, and she starts filming us with her phone and demanding employees' first and last names, screeching that we'll lose our jobs now. The manager had come to the front by now, and he asked her for ID. Genius that she was, Karen left her ID and wallet outside. The manager tells her that she needs to stop filming us and show some ID or she needs to leave. And that's when Karen pulls out the big guns. She says, I'm not leaving. This is public property. I have the right to be here and I have the right to film you. To which the manager says, ma'am, this is not public property. This is private property. Karen says, well, it's open to the public, so it's public property. The manager replies, it's literally not open to the public. You have to be over the age of 21 and show us proof in the form of legal ID, or you're breaking several laws by being in this building. It's at that point, Karen began to whine that she would call the police on us. My manager pointed at the four cameras in the room and said, Please do. I have proof that you harassed our employees and you illegally remained in the building without showing us your ID. Eventually, Karen left. She had to sit on her suitcase in the parking lot and wait for another taxi to come pick her up. What the heck, guys? Like, I'm so baffled. Like, was that woman really about to call the cops over 50 cents? Like, I don't understand what she was trying to do. Like, it's listed at $5.50, you can't demand it for $5, and then start harassing staff and threatening to call police over that. If I were in that store, I would have gladly waited for her to call police just to see her face when it doesn't work out how she wants it to. Jeez, how do I begin? This story is just mad bizarre. So here's the backstory. I love flipping, it's my hobby. I train every single day to get better and better at doing certain tricks. I have a trampoline that I train on. So on this day, I'm practicing what's called a double full, which is basically a backflip with a 720 spin. I see a woman walking down the sidewalk with her child, which is right on the other side of the fence beside my trampoline. The woman says, what do you think you're doing? At this point, I didn't know she was speaking to me, so I just continued jumping. And the woman says, hello? And that's when I say, oh, uh, hi, how can I help you? She then says to me, what the F do you think you're doing? I tell her, uh, I'm just jumping, why, is there a problem? She says to me, there is a problem. I saw you doing those flipping jumps, and my son just tried to tumble like you on the sidewalk. I say to her, yes, I was doing flips. The woman says, now my kid's gonna go home and try this, and he's gonna end up breaking his neck. I tell her, I don't see how it's affecting your child. And that's when she says, excuse me? 
My son just told me he wants to do flips like you, and he tried to flip. Stop trying to get my child to put himself in danger. At this point, I'm trying not to burst out laughing, and I say, what? Ma'am, I don't think you understand. I'm not trying to put your child in danger whatsoever. Also, this is my property. I can do whatever I want to do on it. The woman goes on and says, really? So you're telling me that you're okay with doing flips knowing kids like mine will end up copying you and he might end up dead? At this point, I'm trying really not to laugh. I say to her, so you're telling me that by me doing flips on my own trampoline on my own property that I'm encouraging children to do this. The woman says, yes, now stop it. I then start to jump again and I say, does this trigger you ma'am? Is this encouraging your son to want to do flips and break his neck? And that's when the woman loses it. She says, that's it, I'm gonna come over there and I'm gonna F you up, you little C word. To which I respond, please do. I'll even kindly unlock the gate for you, so you can F me up right in front of my cameras. I would love that. The woman screams F you, and she starts speed walking away with her kid. My goodness guys, Karen's policing people on their own property. You're not allowed to do flips because my son will copy you and he might break his neck. Do you let your son go to school ma'am because I can almost guarantee you kids are flipping in the playground and doing things that might be dangerous. I can only imagine the list of things her son isn't allowed to do when mommy's around. So I don't know what to say to this. This happened at least six months ago and I'm still bewildered by it. Let me explain. So here's some backstory. I have MS and I use a power chair when I leave the house. I've never been known for being boring, so on this day I decided to deck my chair out with a Wonder Woman costume, complete with a cape. I've been using the chair for a few years now and I actually get compliments on how well I can control and maneuver it. But anyway, one day, I felt like getting out of the house, so I went down to my local shopping center to have a look around. I had just gotten there, and I was near the entrance, which of course is always fairly crowded. There were a lot of people in front of me, and no space to go around them, so I was going slow, like at a walking speed. I can go a lot faster, but I tend to match my speed to the people around me, unless I have a clear path. Then, all of a sudden, I feel a hard slap on my arm, and I mean a hard slap. This woman puts some force into it. The slap stops me in my tracks, and I turn my head to see this 40-something Karen who's just past me going in the opposite direction. She then snaps at me saying, Slow down! You're gonna run someone over! Now I have quite the temper on me, so I was super proud that my only response was, Get F. I didn't even yell it, I just said it in my regular voice. She then starts in on some how dare you crap, but I just stopped listening and I gave her the finger as I rolled away. Again, I need to stress that I was going walking speed. Not fast enough to cause any sort of accident as I was matching the pace of the people strolling in front of me. So with that, I continued on my way and I grabbed a coffee, but I started to get really angry thinking, who slaps a random person, let alone one in a wheelchair? So I went to the shopping center office to inquire if they had security footage and told them of the incident. They confirmed they did and would gladly cooperate with police. So I went across the street to report it. They took the reports and said that they would get the tapes from the shopping center to see if they could identify her. And they told me if I saw her again to just ignore her but to film any interaction occurred. I really should have followed up to find out whatever became of her, but I had more important stuff going on and I kept forgetting, and I haven't seen her since. I really have no idea what her problem was, or why she felt that slapping me hard was the solution. And I want to emphasize it wasn't a light tap, if it was, I would have let it go. But it was a full on smack that left my arm stinging with a bright red mark on it. I'm also really glad my husband wasn't with me that day. If you could have seen the look on his face when I told him after I got home, you would understand. I think if he had been with me, the lady would be in the hospital to this day. So that's my story. No dramatic resolution or awesome comebacks, but now you can join in on my head scratching of how some people can be that entitled.
<laughs> Honestly guys, I would have screamed bloody murder at that point and called the police. Like really milk that situation. Like a light tap on the shoulder, OP's right, sometimes people can let that slide. But a full on slap that left a red mark? I think I'd be fighting back, like at that point it would be self defense, right? And yes, I too am baffled OP and scratching my head. So I'd recently gotten a job at a tech repair store and it was really chill. So it was around 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday and I'd just finished fixing my own laptop with my boss's help as I wasn't too experienced yet. When we finished, my boss got up to use the bathroom just as a customer came in. She was in her mid-30s and to be honest, she looked pretty hot. She spent about a minute or two looking around the phone accessories and I asked her, can I help you find something specific? The girl responds, no, I think I found what I was looking for. She then reaches up and grabs a pair of skull candy earbuds and then proceeded to head for the door. And that's when I say, hey, uh, you have to pay for that. And she just looks at me and says, um, no, that's okay. Now I was taken aback by her response. She legitimately thought that she had a choice to pay or not. The store itself was rather small, so she was out the door as soon as the words left her mouth. So I screamed for my boss saying, Yo, boss, this woman just stole headphones. I yelled to him pretty much before vaulting the counter and chasing after her. When I got outside, I realized the woman wasn't even running. She was walking like she had no idea what she did. I jog up to her and say, Hey, you didn't pay for that. The girl says, I don't have to. And I tell her, uh, yes you do. And that's when she says, what the F gives you the right to police me around? I don't owe you nothing. She then gets up in my face in the most obnoxious way possible and she says, I can take whatever the F I want to take. I can have your entire business shut down in one day. And yes, she actually said that. At this point, the woman is still in my face thinking she runs the damn world when I notice the headphones in her right hand. She starts to turn and walk away again, and that's when I snatch them out of her hand and put them in my pocket. And at that point, I thought this was over and done with, but I was wrong. I'm 5 foot 11, and this woman looked about half a foot shorter than me. She grabbed my shoulder and tried grabbing my phone out of my pocket. All the while, she's screaming about calling cops on me for harassing her. And that's when I got a genius idea. I start screaming, help, help, she's grabbing my crotch. I yelled that as loud as I could. There was a group of people around who didn't respond too kindly to this. I then start running as a few people start to converge around her. I make it back to the shop, put the headphones back where I found them, and this is where I thought it would end. But she came back the next day. So the next day, she comes in fuming, saying that I stole her phone and her headphones, and that she's calling the cops and would sue us. I tell her, you need to get out before I call the police. And she says, I'll leave as soon as you give me back my headphones and my phone. I tell her no, and she says, excuse me? I say to her, you heard me, the only thing the cameras caught was you stealing our stuff. So if you want to call the cops here and explain that to the cops, then be my guest. And at that, she effing bolted out of the store. I later found out that she's the daughter of one of the wealthiest families in the area. So a criminal record would completely F up their reputation. Honestly, with that entitled attitude, she might already have a criminal record. Like a rich, spoiled kid, who'da thought? And for someone that can literally have whatever they want, she really thought she could do what she wanted because she's ultra wealthy, guys. Opie should've called the cops anyways, teach her that just because she's rich, the world doesn't revolve around her. And she's not above the law. So I have a best friend who we'll call Anna, who's very rich. However, it wasn't her who's rich, her parents are. Her father's a pilot and her mother is a GM for an engineering company. Now her parents would never spoil Anna and give her loads of money. She was just like any other girl who attends a local school. Anna is also the sweetest girl I've ever met and we became best friends instantly the first time I met her. Anna never flaunts her money, nor speaks about her family because she's seen how her older sister's friends used her because they know she's rich. She's also very humble and has a part-time job as a barista to earn some extra cash over her allowance. So two years ago, a girl who I'm not close to but follows me on Instagram suddenly messages me and invites me to her 18th birthday party. 
I was dumbfounded because we were never close. Heck, I don't even think we've spoken before. I politely told her that I couldn't make it because I have plans, and she would not accept no for an answer. She kept persuading me. Based on my memory, this is how the conversation went. So she basically messages me and says, Hi, it's me. It's been a long time since we've talked, but I kind of missed you, and I thought maybe we should hang out again sometime. To that I say, sure. And she says, Speaking of hanging out, my 18th birthday's coming up. And I thought you should come and hang out. Our old elementary classmates will be there too. I ask her, when is it? She tells me the date and says, hold on, let me send you the information. I look at the date and say, oh, I'm sorry, I can't make it because I have plans already. And that's when she says, no, you really have to come. I haven't seen you for so long. Please come. Cancel your plans. Our elementary classmates would love to meet you. Again, I say, I'm really sorry. I just can't cancel my plans once I've made them. She then says to me, whatever plan it is, just cancel it. Say it's an emergency. Come to my birthday. At this point, I was shocked at her replies because they start getting cold and fierce. I tell her I'll see what I can do and get back to you again. And that's when she brings up my friend and says, Speaking of which, why don't you invite your friend too? I would love to meet her. I ask her, friend? Which friend? She replies, the pretty one who always appears in your Instagram. Invite her over. She looks rich. I ask her, who, Anna? The girl replies, her name's Anna, invite Anna to my 18th party. I say to her, she doesn't know you, so I don't think she'll come. Sorry. To which the girl responds, oh, it's okay. Can I hold my party at her place then? Her house is huge. That's when I say, I don't think this is gonna work out, I'm sorry. She says to me, no, seriously, you're getting on my nerves. Whatever, I'll message her on Instagram and ask her. You're being so selfish. You can't even share your rich friend, you selfish bitch. You're probably just friends with her because she's rich. Needless to say, she really did message Anna, and Anna ended up blocking her, and so did I. It's become our laughing joke since then. Oh, guys, I only wish that OP and Anna went and brought her absolutely nothing. Like, I'm assuming she was only invited because she was expecting some sort of super duper awesome present, right? It's that, or she wanted to wiggle her way into Anna's life and play leech. Either way, super entitled. Alright, I want to tell everyone about my best friend Sally. I've known Sally for about 4 to 5 years now, and usually she's a great friend to have around. However, Sally is really, really entitled. She doesn't like to share with her siblings. If she wants it, it's hers because she said so. The thing about Sally is she thinks just because everyone she meets tells her how pretty she is and how good she is, that these behaviors are allowed. Here are some things that Sally does on a regular when she's around her siblings. So whenever we're hanging out and we want to go somewhere, she always has to be the first out the door every time. She's also always demanding her brother's food and his bowl, even if one of her brothers is already using it. If her baby brother gets a new toy or is just playing with one he's had forever, she'll come running at him and steal it away from him. She has to have it right then. And she won't even play with it. She'll just take it and drop it somewhere else, and no one can touch it without her getting mad. If her brothers get something yummy to eat, she quickly scarfs her portion down, and then takes their portion and eats that too. If one of her brothers is sitting by her mom and she wants to sit there, she will just sit on top of them. Lastly, if someone's in the shower and she wants their attention, she'll just walk in, stand there, and stare at you until she's acknowledged. Despite the fact that Sally's the most entitled bitch that I've ever met, I love her, so here's a picture of Sally. So please tell me if I'm wrong to think she's entitled. I absolutely love this post, guys, and what an adorable dog Sally is. And you know what? I gotta say that this is the only time that I've read an entitled post and was actually okay with it. Somehow, Sally being a dog makes things a thousand times better. I've been with my wonderful girlfriend for a few years now, and we usually get along great, aside from this current issue. So, my girlfriend is a self-proclaimed foodie, which I honestly think is just selling herself short. She's a food genius. She can taste and smell a dish, and then turn around and recreate it, or even make it better than the original. 
if you ever taste something and wonder, what's that super subtle flavor? She can tell you, oh, it's anchovy paste, lavender, and some other obscure spice that you would never think of. When someone's cooking something and they go, oh, it's missing something, she can tell you exactly what it needs. And that's not it either. She heard about a lost family recipe, and the next week, bam, I'm eating my grandmother's homemade sausage again for the first time in 15 years. It's gotten to the point where I don't see any point going out to eat pretty much ever, except maybe her birthday. I've also saved a lot of money being with her than I ever have in any other relationship. The places we usually go for date nights is ramen and sushi. Our anniversary was recently, and I noticed that our local fish counter was selling sushi great fish, along with the rolling mats and nori. So I suggested that we have homemade sushi for our anniversary dinner. And that's when she gets upset and says, I'm not learning how to make sushi because I'll never get a real date ever again. We ended up going out instead. It kind of took me by surprise that she got so mad though. She slightly mentioned that she wanted to go out occasionally to places like Olive Garden because she likes the red sauce or other places because she likes the food. And now that I'm thinking about it, the reason she's gloomy is because I've always asked her to cook on date nights instead of going out often. She also brought up that the food she cooks tastes better to me because she's tasting and smelling it while she cooks so her senses are dulled by the time it's served. But she has the most acute sense of smell and taste that I've ever seen, so I kind of think that's just an excuse to go out. I just don't think it's worth it to go out and pay restaurant food prices when we can just stay home and she can cook wonderful home food for lower prices and have food that's just as excellent. So am I the a-hole? Guys, it is so funny because everyone votes OP the a-hole in this one. The guy gets absolutely destroyed. He's basically using his girlfriend as a personal chef and bragging how much money he saves and the awesome food that he gets to eat while she's putting in so much time and effort into their date nights. Like guys, it just blew my mind when Opie said that she was the one cooking every single dinner date they had together. Like damn Opie. Like damn Opie, take her out and give her a break. Just because she's a great cook doesn't mean she needs to cook all the time. So Opie does come back with an update that says, So a few months ago, I posted this post asking if I was an a-hole for not wanting to take my girlfriend out to restaurants. It blew up. It ended up on Twitter and people shared it to Facebook. And the general consensus was yes, I'm the a-hole and it just went downhill from there. So after I posted and proposed and was rejected, things got pretty awkward between us for the first time in five years. She started to get snappy at me easily, she stopped being as affectionate to me, and started making pretty much nothing but casserole. Everything changed. And to clarify, she usually liked to make more involved food than casserole. Then one day, three weeks ago, she threw down the spoon she was using to serve the thousandth casserole this month, and she snapped at me saying, do you seriously effing think that I actually like eating at Olive Garden? And guys, she saw the post and she was furious. She doesn't even like Olive Garden, she said she'll eat there because the kids love it and it's cheap. She then yelled about Olive Garden for a solid 20 minutes. It wasn't just about Olive Garden, but it was a lot about Olive Garden. Long story short, we've been separated for a few weeks now, and it's not looking good. She says she loves and respects me, but she feels it's best for her to respectfully disengage from me, for her own personal betterment. So yeah. Well, it ended how a lot of people thought it would end, guys, and let me know what you think. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I hope you didn't shake your heads too hard. And if you missed the last episode in the channel, I'll link it right here. OP's mom gets furious that OP ruined her vacation by being in the hospital. It's a wild story, so go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.